Hello, and thank you for watching this December 12th weather update brought to you by Agrable, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co founder of Agrable. Well, for the last few weeks, we have been forecasting a big change in the position of the jet stream for the middle of December, and things really got going over the last weekend. A broad area of precipitation developed ahead of a low-pressure system that moved out of the Rocky Mountains. Snowfall totals through Sunday the 11th look like this across the United States. And when Sunday's totals are finally updated, we'll see much higher amounts across Iowa, northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, and Michigan. Now, since that storm has passed, let's focus on what this means for this week's weather. In a nutshell, snow cover is excellent for rapid cooling of the lower levels of the atmosphere. And now that both the northern tier of states and Canada are snow covered, bitterly cold air has a better chance of getting farther south. Now, every year at this time, I love watching the videos of those houses that have the Christmas lights all timed to music. In fact, one house in our neighborhood did just what this person did here and set their lights up so that they're timed to the Trans-Siberia Orchestra rendition of the song Carol of the Bells, just like this house you're watching here. Well, my kids desperately want me to do this with our house, and while I don't think my dad credentials are up to snuff to pull this off, I can at least teach them something really cool about the massive cold air outbreak that is coming. You see, later this week by Thursday, the first of at least two major cold air intrusions will be invading the northern plains in the Midwest. What I will teach them is that the bitterly cold air here that will produce these morning low temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit for several states in the Corn Belt actually began life in Siberia. Now let me show you what I mean. This map shows us the wind speeds where the air pressure is 850 millibars, which is about one mile above our heads for most of the Corn Belt. You are looking down on the North Pole, and it is clear that the flow of the winds that will be ushering in those brutally cold temperatures originated in Siberia. Cold air outbreaks that include cross-polar flow are often among the most powerful, and I think it's a good time to remind you that even though the 10-year average for people dying from freezing to death in the United States is only 32 people per year, some 600-plus die from cold-related issues. And then there's this statistic. 75% of people who die from cold weather are men. So take this pretty seriously. This week we will see wind chills that are far below freezing, so let's take a moment to discuss what the wind chill is. Let's say that the air temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind speed is 20 miles an hour. The wind chill is minus 9 degrees Fahrenheit. What that means is that your skin will cool at the same rate as if it were minus 9 degrees Fahrenheit and there was no wind. What is important about this chart is the color shading. Below minus 18 degrees Fahrenheit, exposed skin can freeze in 30 minutes. Below about minus 30, it only takes 10 minutes. And we will see wind chill temperatures in the northern plains that might result in exposed skin freezing in as little as 5 minutes with these cold air intrusions from Siberia. With that, let's take a longer view look at the temperatures before we discuss the next winter storm system. This animation shows the 21-member GFS Ensemble forecast for the surface air temperature anomalies through December 20th. What we see is a persistent northwest flow pattern that locks the northern half of the country, and at times nearly all of the country, into below average temperatures. The cold air arrives in two distinct waves, one this week and then one again next week. Beyond December 20th, there is considerable uncertainty in the temperature patterns. Models suggest that it could warm back up closer to the climatological averages for this time of year for the Corn Belt, but I'm not certain of this forecast just yet. We'll have to check in for next week's update. Once I've seen this week's models, give me a better progression of those temperature patterns moving into the last week of December. What we are watching this week is for last weekend's winter storm that hit the Midwest to finally push east, producing a lot of rain in the southeast and the mid-Atlantic and snow in the northeast. Higher air pressure builds in behind before another band of rain, freezing rain, sleet, and snow traversed the central states on Monday night into Tuesday. Right now, the dividing line for the rain looks to follow just north of a line extended from the Ohio River Valley right here. This is not going to be a big snowmaker like the last system was, but it is something we've got to watch. Meanwhile, the west coast is getting pummeled with heavy rains and mountain snows. Well, after this system, I am watching for another potential winter storm hitting the Midwest around December 17th. So keep a close eye on the weather if you're traveling or hauling grain next weekend. Well, let's look quickly at South America. There's been some concern over the dryness in Argentina, so we got to check in on the rainfall there. I got a couple of things to note. 
First, during this time of year, Argentina is typically about half planted. Drier weather during planting is not necessarily a bad thing as long as rain is in the forecast. In second, Brazil's soybean planting is nearly finished, and conditions are quite favorable for the start of their growing season. In fact, Mato Grosso and northern growing regions will be wet for this week, while southern growing regions in Argentina are having a dry week this week. But the long-range forecasts on the right here are bringing in timely rains to these southern growing regions, so we'll keep you up to date on what's going on in Brazil throughout the rest of their growing season. Well, as we finish, let's come back to the United States. This map shows the historical probability of having a white Christmas across the United States. Feel free to pause the video, take a closer look at your location. But just remember, the bitterly cold air that we will see this week and next may not hang around through Christmas, which could be a good thing for travel. We'll have all of those updates in next week's video. Well, as always, we at Agrible will bring the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.